All right, everybody, so I'm back again with another review. This is the Bay Area's only tour reviewer, Carl, and I am here today reviewing the Max Factory Figma Tekka Man Blade. Some of you may or may not be familiar with who this guy is. I watched this show when I was a child back in the 90s, dating myself, I know. But because the show left such a huge impression on me when I was a child, I needed... I needed this guy. I needed to have him. He's a part of my childhood that was very pleasant, that I look fondly on remembering. So here he is in the flesh, Tech Man Blade. Now, before I get into the figure, I want to stress this with this guy. This is not a toy. This is not something that you can play with on the floor with your child or your friends or anything like that. This is very fragile. It doesn't feel cheap, but it's very fragile. There are a lot of uh, breaky bits on it that if you aren't careful can just snap right off and then the figure's ruined. These aren't toys. These aren't things you play with. They are designed to pose and look good and nothing else. That's what they do. <clears throat> As you can see, he comes with a lot of different accessories. Well, not a lot of different accessories. He comes with a couple accessories. He comes with these, the lance, the Tekka lance. He comes with his Tekka shield. And he comes with this hand tree gimmick here, which I really like for um, storing the hands. Uh, it also comes with this bag here, too. And it comes with this additional head. And I'll show the difference in the two. But it comes with this additional head. With a... Let me stop moving around so much with... Let me see if I can catch the light. With a more pronounced face. That you can see more visually. With the visor a little bit more open. So let's get into the figure. He also comes with this stand here too, this Figma stand. The stands are really, really nice. It has this, uh, take this guy off here. But the stands are really, really nice. You got a, uh, focus. So you got a joint here, peg here, joint here, joint here. Uh, it's on a swivel, which is really nice. It's sort of ambidextrous, so it goes both ways. Um, you can actually pull this. You can pull this whole like a uh, arm off the off the stand, and it's replaceable. If I can do it, yep, there we go. So for whatever reason your um. So if for whatever reason your peg arm is damaged, you can replace it. You can switch it out. Uh, this is cool because this peg can go into a lot of different type of figures if it has a, a peg hole that fits, but. I literally need it because whereas, yeah, he can stand on his own. He can stand on his own. I wouldn't tempt it, especially if you're putting him on a shelf. Um, these guys are very fragile. As I said, they're fragile, but they're not cheap. So if this guy takes a shelf dive, yeah, he something might break off. So I would recommend keeping him connected to the stand at all times, especially if you're going to display him in any sort of dynamic pose or whatever the case may be. Uh, we will get into the articulation all right now. Okay, so his head does go around 360. As you can clearly see, I have to be very careful with this, with these, with these gimmicks here, because they're very, they're very fragile. Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> and Bobby Skullface has made mention to this, and I want to give credit to him because I don't want to make it seem like I'm stealing his stick here. But what Figma has done here is Figma has put the trust in the hands of the buyer. So they didn't cheap the opinion, they didn't sort of like uh, cheat you on the appearance of the figure to make it easier for people who don't respect their toys or respect their figures because this is not, it's a toy but it isn't. So there's that. 
uh, this goes around. This does goes around. This does go around 360, but it's also hindered a little bit by his shoulder pad. Uh, this I've never seen this sort of gimmick before, so this is new to me. I right, see. So you know, what, let me take him off the deal here. Like I said, this is this is like a whole brand new ball of wax for me. I this is my first Figma, so I don't really know how they do business, but this is okay for what it for what it is. But this is a ball peg, right? <clears throat> and it's connected to a joint inside there. All right, let me see if I can move this, get it in the light a little bit more, because it's all this black. There we go. But like I said, this is on a ball peg. It's pegged inside the shoulder, but the shoulder pad is connected to the arm, which is on a swivel. Hold on. Yeah, which is on a swivel. Yeah. So that's a first for me. Like, that's new. That's a whole new gimmick for me. <clears throat> um, moving down the feet. It's the same thing on the both sides, on both sides, too. So it gets you to about there. Uh, moving down the elbow, it is a single elbow joint. Got a wrist swivel. This is a gripping hand. I just swapped it out so when I show the tech a lance. But it's got a wrist swivel. It's got a wrist hinge that gets you to about there. And back to about there. Um, you know what? A quick little, uh, not synopsis, but a quick little history of this character. For those of you who are unfamiliar with who Tech Man Blade is, Tech Man Blade is a being, an armor clad being that fights a race of alien spider crabs called the Radom. <clears throat> I'm not gonna spoil, uh, I'm not gonna spoil how they're, how the, the relation of the two. But for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a show that came out in like 1991, so it's really, really old. It's a really old show. There hasn't been any remakes, um, though there was one that did come out in the 70s, I believe. It was also called Tech of Man, uh, the Space Knight. So this is sort of like a a successor to that show. Um, like I said, it was a show I watched in the '90s. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. Uh, well, I don't know if it was a good show. It was a '90s cartoon. You know what I mean? Like it was it was '90s anime. So it's sort of they all have that sort of like look aesthetically. So, but that, I mean, that's what it was. But there are aspects of the show that are very progressive. And watching it back as an adult, I'm like, wow, I can't believe that they went for it in the 90s. And I watched this as a child, not realizing what it was I was looking at. <laughs> but I still enjoyed the show nonetheless. Uh, let's see, getting into the head sculpt. Um, the head sculpt looks fine. I wish that they would have, I don't know, added in some black maybe uh, just to differentiate a little bit more the um, individual sections of uh, of armor plating on the face mask. Not necessarily black lines, but maybe make certain bits of armor different shades of white so that way it stands out a little bit more. Maybe looks like uh, some shading because as it currently stands, it kind of just all looks like just one. And then you combine that with the fact that, like, the green isn't bleeding, but it looks like it is. And they could have used a little bit of a, a little bit of black line work in there to make it a little bit more defined, I think. But that's a nitpicky thing. I'm not damning the figure to hell because of that. But, you know, that's just something that I noticed looking at the figure. Uh, same thing on the other side, the um, double-jointed elbow... Swivel on the wrist, the swivel of the wrist. These things aren't on ball pegs. They just peg right in. 
and I like it because it makes it easier to pull the fist on and off, but it makes me nervous just because I'm afraid of like, if I pull it off, you know, like what, I don't know. I'm weird. If, if I'm weird, it's just, I don't know. I'm worried about the integrity of the peg hole, just pulling it out and then putting it back in. And like, what if it gets loose? And what if I lose the fist? And I get worried about that kind of stuff. Moving down the figure, he does have a, uh, he has a uh, ball joint gimmick in his chest, which gets you that kind of motion, gets you forward to about there and back to about there, which is really nice. I, I dig it for one of the gimmicks about this figure, and I will show it to you. He also has a ball peg here, and this ball peg goes into a T-joint into the legs. So it gets you to about... I don't know, like you can rotate it. You can rotate it, as you can see, you can rotate it. So it's not bad. Now this sort of, this gimmick here sort of, sort of bothers me. And I think that if they would have managed to um, adjust this a little bit more, it would have put this figure over for me. In the cartoon, Tekken Man Blade and the other Tekken Man, because there are different ones. Uh, they're very top heavy and that has a lot to do with the fact that um, the the way it's drawn it's from the 90s so a lot of 90s characters have that huge upper body and then really really skinny legs and whereas this goes fine I wish they would have made the legs a little bit more beefy and a little bit more um, stable and sturdy so that way it can, in fact, stand on its own, being completely unassisted by the stand on a regular basis. Whereas it, this, it, it looks right, but I don't like it. So it's got a, uh, it, these the legs are connected to a ball peg here, right? And the ball peg are connected to these, um, these swivels in the hip, these swivels in the upper thigh. So, the upper thigh will turn, but you got to be mindful of that because doing it so often, especially because the legs are so spindly, will in fact um, damage the leg. I don't really, it's not a concern. It's a concern I have, but it's not one that will really bother me because I don't rough house with these things. I understand what they are. So I treat them as such. He has a double, well, it's not really a double jointed knee. What it is, is it's one big, it's like one big, uh, one big hinge. And it pegs into both the upper thigh and calf. So it gets you back to about there. Which is good. It looks real seamless when it, when it looks like that, which is really nice. Then you get into the ankle. The ankle is on a rocker, I believe. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is on a, um... It is on a hinge. Gets you up to about there. <laughs> Gets you back to about there. And these do move in and out for some reason. And they're on like really, really uh, fragile hinges here. So just be careful of that. That's the whole... To me, that's just the, the story of this figure's life is be really careful. <clears throat> just be really careful because this like I said this thing is not a toy that you play with it's a toy that looks good on your shelf and that's what it does all this plastic is really glossy which is which is nice and it's consistent throughout the entire figure and I really like that the fact that aesthetically it looks uniform and they could have got that wrong with putting in different types of plastics here and there but it's all got this glossy feel and it gives it that sort of 90s feel, which, you know, it gives it sort of that 90s feel. Oh, the little back details here. It gives it that 90s feel, which you can really, uh, which you can really dig. Also, the um, Tekka Shield does peg into the, uh, the back here. Oop, if I can get it. This, but it does peg into the back there for storage. I don't recall him using this. 
in the show, but I'm not really finished watching it as of this video. Um, the Tekka Shield also pegs into this gimmick here. If I could do this with one hand. But this comes out, his uh, his gauntlet, his gauntlet deal comes out. And you can plug the, uh, you can plug the shield right into there. As I said, I don't remember this in the show, but then again, I'm rewatching it because I watched it as a child and like, I don't remember shit as a kid. So... There's that. Let's plug this back in. Plug this bad boy back in. There we go. Now, as far as the lance goes, he does hold the lance very nicely. Um, the hand feels tight. doesn't feel loose like it's going to fall off. The problem with this is that these are on pegs. You see how easy I just took that off? That's another thing. you got to be careful with that. The lance looks fantastic. It's uh, silver and gray paint. Um, it looks great at the hilt here. The Tekken Lance is like one of the main, it's the main weapon of, uh, it's the main melee weapon of the Tekken Man. Because I've said there's more than one, but see, it just, it came right off. So you got to be careful. Now, as far as the additional head goes, I'm not going to um, take it off, but I will tell you how to. Okay, so the head is on a peg. It's on a ball peg that's connected to a hinge connecting into the chest. If you pull off the head, right, this neck piece will be an independent floating piece. And then what you do is you take the head and you peg it back in inside the floating neck piece and then there you go. Another like weird gimmick that they put on this figure is this deal here. Like if you look really close, like these move and these are on ball pegs for whatever reason. These rib, these rib gimmicks here, I don't know why that's a big deal, but like in the show they put emphasis on it. So they didn't really put emphasis on it in the show, but it's something that they made a point to animate. So when he, when, when D-Boy, the main character who is Tekka Man Blade transforms like it, it starts at the rib and then the whole this gimmick here appears and then the whole suit appears. It's just it's this weird gimmick that I felt like they didn't need to put on because they could have used that engineering for something else. But they felt like they it was something that they needed to do. So they did it. But the gimmick I was talking about earlier in the video is this. Let's see if I can do this now individual results may vary but as far as like the simplicity of how this goes so what you do is you just untab that and pull that back Because mine has this little gapage here, and that's what I mean. As far as like individual results may vary, there's this gapage here, and it won't close all the way, which is fine. It's not a deal breaker, but you know, I don't know. And it opens up. And there you have it. And that. Ladies and gentlemen, is the Tekka Man's ultimate weapon. It is called the Voltecker. It's sort of like uh, the Giver's um, chest cannon. It's a weapon that's housed inside the armor that he can fire. It has incredible destructive power. It can destroy a lot of different things. But as you know, like any show, its power is inconsistent. But <clears throat> looking at the Voltecker on the inside, this just, it looks really great. Even though it's just black and green on the inside, the green looks really, really nice. They could have gotten this really wrong, real easy. But they didn't, 
they didn't sort of cheap it. You know what I mean? They could have just been like, oh, well, it's whatever. You don't really see it because your shoulders are, the shoulder pads are going to be down most of the time. But they gave it to you. You know, they, they took a little bit of time, put the love in there, and made it look really nice. So, I mean, the light catches it. The light catches it just right, and they look like they're shimmering almost. It just, they, it just, aesthetically, it looks really, really good. But let's clean them up, and I'll give you the uh, final verdict. All right, guys. Before I forget, because I realized that I just completely left this out, there's two sides to this thing. That's why they call it the Tekka Lance. Let me get my hands out of the way. But there's two sides of this. That's why they call it the Tekka Lance, right? <clears throat> and aside from the uh, single handles that come in these, which I showed in the previous video of him holding it, he comes with this middle bar here this middle handle so you just pop it in like that and you pop it in like that and it creates the Tekka Lance which is like his main melee weapon it looks good also too he comes with this hand tree which I showed in the beginning of the video he comes with these star hands um, he comes with these sort of like, yeah, hands. And then he comes with uh, his gripping hands and the fist. Okay, here's my final verdict on this guy. I say pass. If you are not already a fan of this show, and I'm talking about like a huge, huge fan of this show and this character... I say do not spend money on this. You will not get any sort of fun or enjoyment out of messing with this guy. This is for the people who like the show. And they made this for the people who like the show because they've only made two characters from the show in the Figma line. So I say no. Like, I'm a fan of the show. I'm already all in. Um, it was a part of my childhood that I really, you know, I wanted to recapture with these figures, um, in buying this figure, in watching the show again, it made me want to buy the figure. So the engineering is sort of weird, and it sort of gets in, uh, it gets in its own way because there's so many like spiky bits and little fragile pieces here and there. It's not a toy. It's not. It's not a toy. It's it's a posable statue. So and. The common thread here is you got to be careful. You got to be careful with this. You got to be careful with that. You got to be careful with just the whole thing. You got to be careful with it. If it takes a shelf dive, that might be the end of the figure. So <laughs> depending on how high the uh, the shelf is, you got to keep them on the stand constantly in order to pose them. I would not recommend buying this even if you can get him on the cheap. Like I said, this is for the fans of the show who watch the show, not religiously, but, you know, know the little nuances of the show. Uh, if you want to recreate any of the stuff you want to see in the show, this is for them. This is for the fans. This is not for the casuals. This is for like the diehard Tekka Man Blade fans that, you know, play the games and bought, you know, watch the show, things like that. But I'm reiterating the same points over and over and over again. So I'm going to wrap this up. So I say, pass unless you're a diehard fan then i say yeah you may get enjoyment out of this uh there aren't there's only one other tekka man blade from a uh from um from a line and it's called the uh, armor plus line and those are even more expensive than these and it's just you got a lot of armor pieces that can fall off real easy and just Unless you're a fan, I say go for it. But this is the Bay Area's only tour reviewer, Carl, signing out.